God damn it. Yeah, you see, you see how good I am off the cuff? Why, why do I need to prepare what I'm going to say before before I say stuff? Hey, hey it, people, it's episode, what, 11? I am not your personal assistant, all right? I don't need to get all of your information and forms and coffee. It's your, it's your own problem. Drew, you know you're talking first. Get your shit together. Drew, I have treated you like my personal assistant for coming on eight years. Nigh on eight years. <laughs> I don't know what more I have to do to make it clear that you are my personal assistant. Now, what episode is it? Eleven? Eleven. See? Episode eleven. Never forget. Okay. <laughs> so, we got that out of the way. Nine eleven joke. Check. What is the next thing on the list? Chud jokes. Chud jokes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, episode 11 could be the weakest episode we've had. There's only two people really, involved. Really? You're, you're burying this already? We're, we're Scott, less nope. than a minute in and we're burying this? First of all, it's just you and me. Yeah. Which, on positive note, means we can shit talk anybody we, we want. Can sh- yeah, it, there's a, it's op- open game at this point. <laughs> Who will I pick first? I have a good guess, but I've been wrong before. Hmm... I'm I'm okay. cur- I'm currently making a bet with myself. My first assignment will be to mention how terrible it is to look at Alex McConnell's face without a beard. Oh yeah, that's uh, a mess. His his Movember pictures have gotten progressively better because he's growing it back because it's coming in. But without one startled day, me. Day 1 unacceptable. Day 1 was the most unacceptable Alex McConnell I've ever he's- seen. He's self-aware though, because like his like what he wrote on the picture is like w- why why do I look like this? Basically, <laughs> he d- he was not and he did not want to do it. He was no happier about it than us. Yes. <laughs> Unfortunately for for uh, him, he doesn't have to look at it as much. That's true. He yeah, as long as he avoids mirrors <laughs> yes. for the month of Reflective November. Reflective surfaces, yeah. no windows, no mirrors. Then he's okay. Yeah. Then he is better off than everyone in his close proximity. I'm not... Well, you lost that bet to yourself, didn't you? I did lose that bet to myself. I had good money on Dan. <laughs> <laughs> I can't smack talk Dan, because Dan might have gotten me a better job than I currently have. But you don't have it yet. No, but at least it's an option. It is an option. And it, it's definitely better than your current job, so... <laughs> Most things are better than my current job. Worth investigating. Um, I was just saying, oh yeah, I'm not doing Movember, per se, because I don't believe in... Causes. <laughs> and this I, I thought you were going to say you don't believe you're not doing Movember because you are not one of those disgusting Egyptian cats. <laughs> That's true. Nobody likes nobody likes a hairless cat. First no, of all, they are disgusting. Yeah, the uh, oh, yeah, it's just off putting. Uh, the Hans Mole Man of cats. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, so I'm not doing Movember per se, and also because I I guess the proper way you're supposed to do it is to shave at the beginning of November and then grow the mustache. Yeah. Uh, that would require me shaving, which is uh, Alex McConnell bad proportions times a million. Because <laughs> <laughs> when I shave, I look like a fat 13-year-old. <laughs> well, you are also kind of known for your facial hair. And also I have a gimmick to maintain, but what I have committed to is to not... Shave my mustache over the course of this month, which was already there at the beginning of this month, and it is now all the way in my mouth. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. Yeah, I, you're you're eating it. I'm chewing on it every meal. Yes. Every meal is whatever food I'm eating and hair. And hair for sure. Yeah. See, I I committed to it at the beginning. I, last year I did no shave November, so I grew a whole beard. Right. And this year I decided I would do Movember. But the fact that I am 26 years old and grow the mustache of a 13-year-old Mexican boy. Yes. Which does not work. So <laughs> I grew it for, I think, the first week, week? and a bit. Yeah. And I, I got fed up with it. It wasn't it, like it was growing in, but it was not a mustache. <laughs> like, and the sad part is my dad could grow a full beard at 16, including yeah. mustache. Full everything, right? Yeah. I cannot grow, I don't grow anything below my lip, and I can barely grow a mustache. So, yeah. and my hair, facial hair grows in fucked up colors, because <laughs> my dad is a ginger, so my chin is orange, my sides are black, and my mustache is blonde for some reason. Nice, and nothing says creepy uncle like a blonde mustache. I, yes, for sure. Nobody is creepier than a man with a blonde mustache. Yeah, it's just, it's just a look I try to avoid, and it, it's a look I could have, but I not what I want. 
Yes. My, uh, hanging, my... Out, hanging out at barbecues, talking to the kids, <laughs> sipping, sipping on your Becks. Yeah, and, and, and none of the kids are yours. No, kind of, no, you don't. No. You don't know anybody there. You're just at the barbecue. Oh yeah, yeah. You're you are a stranger at that barbecue, you're, and eventually someone notices. You showed up, and then you have to leave, and then you have to leave. Yeah, my dad has uh, dark brown, approaching black hair, uh, blonde mustache, and a red beard. <laughs> This is a good look. Which is why my dad shaves. Was, was his dad also a ginger? Uh, his dad might have been a rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. He is half rainbow on his father's side. <laughs> so that, that, that makes you one, <laughs> one quarter, quarter rainbow. One quarter rainbow. <laughs> one quarter rainbow, one half tiger. Yeah, and... Uh, <laughs> And a quarter uh, Norwegian. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm glad my hair is pretty much uniform color. I'm glad I didn't get that weird trait. And and body hair too, which is awesome because I have a lot of it, but it's blonde, so mm-hmm. I don't have to deal with it. Yeah, it's like my arm hair. My arms don't look very hairy, but they are definitely yeah. there. Because if I had dark body hair, I would be a fucking monster. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you would be a, a horrid creature. <laughs> yes. I, w- I would definitely be l- locked in a basement for the majority <laughs> being of my fed, days. Being fed fish heads. <laughs> yeah, exactly. out, of a, yeah. out of a bucket. Yeah, no, my, my honest to God, the simple color of my body hair being different would drastically alter my life. Yes, for sure. <laughs> See, luckily for me, I, I do a lot of manscaping, so I keep my upper chest and back nicely clipped. I have never touched any body hair besides pubes once a year. <laughs> once a year? Yep. So you let the bush grow and then... I like to see how some... much I like to see how much it could grow in a year. Spoiler, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you trim it, it makes it look bigger. <laughs> so I've been told. So I've been told, yeah. But no, I don't, I don't feel like I need a lot of work. I think I'm. <laughs> I think I'm beautiful as I am. <laughs> I don't know where I was going. In your own skin. I am 100 percent comfortable with my own skin. <laughs> now, speaking of Movember, I want to say how impressed I am with with Justin's. He actually has a pretty good mustache going it's on. It's not bad. I I yeah. didn't think being a Chinaman he could grow a mustache very well. He could only grow a mustache. But like, is the I figured it'd just the, be like you know that little the, right at the corner of your mouth and the, it comes down. The Confucius. The Confucius. <laughs> I figured that was what was going to happen, but no, he's actually no. got a pretty decent one going. Yeah, it's not because when he grows chin hair, he gets like those random like one or two spread out around his chin. Yeah, he should not do that. <laughs> no, definitely not. Give up on the chin, but yeah, mustache is working all right, so stick with it. Yeah, and well, Kelly's just naturally Kelly can grow whatever he wants. <laughs> filled with hair, so yeah. he. But I don't think he's really doing it. I don't know. I haven't really seen him that much recently. But I don't he... think he's doing. It. I think he's just regular scruffy Kelly. He sort of had one last week. It's hard to tell. It's it's different every time. Because if he week. doesn't shave three times a day, it grows back. Yeah, yeah. You can have a mustache for an hour, and then, <laughs> but then yeah. then it's back to full beard. Yeah, yeah. He did he did November between the hours of four and five p.m. on yeah. November seventh. <laughs> yes, yes. Of course he did. Yeah, that that was his November. Yeah, that works. I can't believe uh, eight and a half minutes of mu- of hair talk. I can go all night. All night. I got, on hair I got talk. a lot to say about hair. <laughs> oh man. So I guess we're uh, this this constitute a, a a boner app or a full app? A full app it. A full app it. A full app it all night. All right. I just I just slammed an energy drink at midnight. I'm good to go. All right, me too. What is it? Is it one? It's one. Fuck me. Well, all right. It's because we were watching that fantastic show. Oh man, that's a show I didn't know existed and now wish didn't. <laughs> Essentially, there was a show on MTV a few years ago that. Uh, Aziz Ansari had talked about on his one of his albums called Next, yeah. which essentially was you know a guy or a girl with random options of the opposite sex, yeah. and they all had really cheesy, dumb statistics about them. Yeah. And the show essentially was it was all I rigged, and it was it was booked just to make teenagers enjoy themselves. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah not entirely sure what the point was. Yeah. Anyway, so this show that we just saw is called Baggage, which was combining the show Next 
with the Jerry Springer show. I thought you were going to say with Deal or No Deal. <laughs> kind of, actually, yeah. <laughs> At first, when we first, when the show started, because we, we just watched an episode of uh, It's Always Sunny, and it was one of the random American channels we get, like WGN Oklahoma or something like that. Yeah. And, uh... Yeah, they were airing all... Because I, uh, I was in Rhode Island uh, two weeks ago, and they were airing all the commercials I saw in Rhode Island. And oh. I think some of them were local, so I don't know what the fuck channel it is. Maybe it's a Boston channel. Weird. Oh, maybe it is a Boston channel. Yeah. Anyways, uh, so we, we finished watching the Always it's, it's Always Sunny episode, and this came on, and we were talking, and I wasn't really paying attention to TV. And we're like, what well, when is I s- this? <laughs> when I saw it, I thought that it was, like, because you know how uh, they took Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, and they made it like one of those syndicated, like, yeah. blah shows, and it's hosted by Meredith, Meredith Vieira. Vieira. yeah. I assumed that that was... Um, Springer hosting Deal or No Deal. Springer hosting, like... That's exactly what I thought. Like, the only shown at, like, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, Deal or No Deal. That's what I thought it was, until I saw what was going down. Yeah. (laughs) Then she got interesting. Oh, man, it was so weird. And, like, obviously they picked three complete fucking weirdos. weirdos. (laughs) Like, there's no... Like, they don't pick regular average Joes, because the one dude... Because where's the fun? Oh, yeah. (laughs) Nobody wants to see a real dating show. They want to see... Bullshit. (laughs) Freaks of nature. So, the one guy was, like, super nerdy, wore a superhero costume underneath his clothes, wrote in his diary every night. What was his third one? I uh, believed he was a wizard in a believed past life. believed he was a wizard in a past life. Then you have black guy who jacked and ripped, but didn't enjoy sex. And doesn't could, like to make eye contact with doesn't women. Doesn't like to make eye contact with women because it's too serious, and recently became a father. Yeah, would, that one was out of left field. Didn't surprise me at all. He is so, black. Certainly, and he, as we said, that child will be raised by his mother. <laughs> no, his his the well, child's grandmother. The child's grandmother. The so, guy's no. Mother. It'll be the mom's mom. The mom. Yeah, it will be the mom's. Dad mom. won't even be involved. Dad's side of the family will have nothing Not to do with involved. that kid. There will be a child support trial in I'm going to say 12 years. Yes. And the third guy was essentially like your typical douchebag who like kicks girls out at 8 a.m. after he bangs them. Only talks to beautiful women and looks just like John Cena. And didn't get a third fact because he got kicked because off. Because he got booted for being a douchebag. God, what has become of TV? I don't know. It's pretty interesting, though. It was, it was fun. It was fun. Pretty weird to do. Oh, and uh, also should be noted, Springer was 100% mailing it in <laughs> and just collecting a paycheck. He, he just wanted that... that uh, Two hundred and thirty dollars they were giving him. <laughs> yeah, that's probably right. Springer, Springer's a cheap date. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, two thirty gross is probably not that far off the mark <laughs> per episode. I would guess. Yeah, no, he's uh, he's not making the big bucks on some random TV show that we didn't even know existed. That yeah, I'm gonna say nine out of nine people don't know exists. <laughs> <laughs> nine out of eight. <laughs> So, uh, we are tomorrow we are, afternoon. We are tomorrow. Well, actually, sorry, yeah, I guess it is 1.15 a.m. We are a. today. So, today at, we are yesterday. at 4.20-ish. 4.20-ish. We will be... It's usually after 4.20, so you can get your business done at 4.20. That's true. Are we gonna... Are we gonna get high tomorrow? We're gonna get wet. <laughs> We're gonna get wet? <laughs> We're gonna get wet. <laughs> oh, it's PCP, nigga. <laughs> I didn't know you like to get wet. What? <laughs> uh, we will be witnessing live, although this will be my first, this will be Scott's second. Correct. Uh, our very, my very first episode of the show that we rip off almost every time we record an episode. Yep. Uh, Doug Loves Movies will be live from Vancouver. Hooray. Uh, which should be pretty exciting, although I'm a little concerned that I haven't made a name tag yet. <laughs> And I just realized I'm not going home between oh. now and seeing the show, so I don't have a name tag unless I make one here. Well, my thoughts are tomorrow, Walmart run. I am on board with this plan. We'll have to find something completely silly. Or, yeah. my original plan was I was going to take a piece of styrofoam and toothpicks and go buy a 40-pack of Timbits and smell, spell out my name in Timbits That's in bad. hopes that it's food and they will get it. Food is a good seller. It's with very them. high on that list. Yeah. And as far as we can tell, you know, Doug doesn't usually ta- tell you who Yeah, he doesn't announce are. his guests, but we've been doing our homework yeah. trying to figure out who they're going to be. Yeah. I've been looking at people who are in the area, yeah. and the two people I've found are Brian Posehn, 
which is awesome. Yep. And David Hunts, David Huntsberger, which is also awesome. So yeah, Posehn I've seen before, although not in this capacity. I've seen I've seen Posehn do stand up. Yeah. And Huntsberger I've only heard and not seen. And the only the other seems the, like a good guy. I think the other uh, acceptable guess would be uh, Graham Elwood. Elwood's always a possibility. He just he, he's he, attached to Doug's. He dick. often goes where Doug goes, and and same with same with Huntsburger to a degree. Yeah. Or maybe we were saying to uh, there's a local Seattle guy, uh, Big J. Big J. Okerson, once, yeah, which would be all right because it's not hard for him to come up here. Yeah, he could come up. Or maybe somebody else who's like in the Seattle region, yeah. or even somebody flying up from California. I don't know. Yeah, you you never know if someone, you know, even if someone's like shooting a movie here or something. Yeah, maybe. Maybe because there's always stuff get going another, on. Get so. another Chris Evans. Get him shit faced. Yeah, that was a, a great get episode. Get drunk Captain America out that of nowhere. Was such a good episode. <laughs> yeah. But so yeah, this yeah, I'm I'm excited about it. Yeah, the the first one I saw was uh, Howard Kramer, uh, Kulap Velisak, which is uh, Scott Ackerman's wife, mm. and Garfunkel. Garfunkel Oates. Oates. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was a good show. Babes. Total babes, bang them both. Yeah, total babes. Uh, yeah, so looking forward to Ricky Lindholm, who is uh, Garfunkel. Uh, full nude scene in a uh, movie next year by the name of Hell Baby. Hell Baby, directed or produced by Thomas Lennon and Rob Hubel. But, and yes, I believe so. Directed or produced, one of the two. They're involved. I think they directed. Wrote, right, wrote it, written it. I think yeah, did uh. He will write because because Tom Lennon and uh, Robert Ben Garant write a lot of stuff together. All right, well, maybe Hubel was just involved. I yeah. know he's in it. He's in it for sure. So, uh, yeah. So yeah. I guess the next time we record uh, will be which will be tomorrow after that show. Yeah. With uh, with the people we went with, most likely, and yeah. a few others. It'll probably be I'd say us. Kelly Summers, Justin Chu, and possibly two other Yeah, possibly one or friends. two others going with us who will be, if they do, will be making first-time appearances. So that'll be cool. Yes, and... Uh, and and Dan City might show up too, especially if we play Would You Bang? <laughs> which we probably could. <laughs> which we probably could. Um, so yeah, that'll be the that'll be next episode for all four people that listen to. Yes. Well, actually, that's not true. We get 100 downloads. We that's get about 100. Pretty yeah. good. I'm fine with 100. I wonder who the hundred people are. Do you think there's any random people? The, well, haven't you had some like random request, or, like friend ads on YouTube? The, it was like it? one or two. Yeah, but I haven't even talked to them. Yeah, so there's probably a couple randoms. I don't know how the thing. The thing is the way we do our media, both for this and uh, and our wrestling media. We we make it like super inaccessible like unless you this is exactly what you're looking for you're never gonna stumble yeah, on it for sure like we like we basically don't want new viewers <laughs> we we only want people we know we, listening to we us we have a very tight-knit fan base yeah and we're gonna keep that tight-knit fan base yeah and we don't not, expand and not expand it's, it's a local territory we never gain we never lose <laughs> we, we have we have local territory we only bring in a few select people here and there yeah we are this forever because i put uh like i can put keywords in the youtube thing so if people search for like tits? M- movies or tits or something <laughs> it would come up but no i i make a point of putting zero keywords i never list our full names yeah. i only like uh, I never, I only put, like, I put, I, unless you search for I Suck Dick's Heart Cinema, that it, you, and, oh yeah, and heart with the heart symbol, not the word heart. Not the word, yeah. So, you know, just in case you actually <laughs> type the words, you still don't fucking get it. Yeah, so, uh, if, if you're, li- if you're even listening to this, you've, like, to solve the labyrinth oh, you, <laughs> to get in here. Yeah, you've cracked the code. You've cracked yeah. the Da Vinci code of I Suck Dick's Heart Cinema. Yeah, totally. Well... Not there's no um, immediate news, but in the in the near future things will change. There will be a there will be an uprising uh, of of sorts. Uh, I'm not gonna say anything until it's official, but we're working on some things. Yeah, and uh, it'll be it'll be an interesting 2013, assuming we live past the uh, Aztec calendar, or as I like to call it, Y2K2, <laughs> or as I like to call it. The Mayan calendar. Rose well, Aztec Mayan. Which is, which is what you meant. <laughs> same same goddamn thing. They're all the same to me. They're all the same. Oh, goddamn man. bean pole 
You have nowhere to go with this. <laughs> nope. I was trying to think of racist things for Mexicans that you aren't went, beaner. You started bean, and then you you, you lost the thread. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> Look, I watched movies that involved being kind to other races, so... So that's gonna put you in a bad mood, first of all. Yeah. I was busy having American Thanksgiving dinner being... Neither American, nor it being American Thanksgiving. <laughs> oh for 2. Are you going to complain with a great dinner? No, it was good. So, anytime I get to eat Thanksgiving, that's fine. Mm, full-blown turkeys. Full-blown turkeys. It's good times. I wish I had some turkey. I had Subway for lunch and popcorn for dinner. <laughs> I was figuring you were going to say Subway for lunch and dinner. I think what you did might have been worse. <laughs> for sure. No breakfast. That's a solid day. And then I had uh, Doritos for pre-podcast for, for now <laughs> to give keep my energy up. Yeah, that's a good way to do it. That's the way all the best gamers do it <laughs> for sure. And hot pockets, hot pockets, Mountain Dew, and Doritos. And no friends. Well, no real friends. No, only in-game friends. Sure. Yeah. Only only friends who you know by their gamer tag. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Those people are the worst. <laughs> um, so I guess we're recording this now so that tomorrow we can just play games and not have to do a four-hour podcast where we just talk about movies. Oh, yeah. Those who listen to all three parts of episode 10, good for you. Yeah, that you, was that you, was long. You win the prize I, well, you committed friends. You guys got to listen to it in chunks that are sort of our regular episode length of an hour and change, but those were, those are all... As you heard, those were all in a row. We talked for four fucking hours. And actually, we talked for... After we shut it off, we talked to Nick for like another hour. <laughs> to be fair, and it wasn't it wasn't a struggle to talk for no. four and a half hours or whatever it was. No, it was, I, it was I, perfectly... I, think, I think if you talk for four hours, it's it's going fine. Because nobody tries to talk for four hours yeah. who doesn't want to. And the thing, too, is it wasn't like it was just one or two of us talking. Like, everybody was Yeah, and, and we had like a rotating cast, because like... Just, Chew, Justin left, left Kelly, and came. Kelly came. And yeah, yeah it, was, it was all over the place. It was good. So, I guess to start off with the talking of movies... Movies, you say? Um, you and I both saw separately, because we saw it without you, because it was more fun to see it without you. And then you saw it with fatter version of me. <laughs> so, that one, and then I've seen two other separate movies in theaters... Busy guy. Um, well, two movies that I've been looking forward to for a long ass time. Yeah. Uh, so you uh, here, myself, and Big China and uh, Wolf Face Kelly uh, went and saw Wreck It Ralph. Yeah. And you, uh, while you were in Rhode Island, went yeah. and saw it with Fatter Drew. I saw Fatter Drew, which apparently was a an achievement in itself because Drew Cordero. Hates movies. It was an achievement, yeah, getting him to go to a movie. I because... Sex Dicks Heart Cinema, Drew Cordero loathes cinema. Yeah. Like, rarely do you find someone, like, I feel like that's like someone saying, I don't like music. Like, it's such a broad thing to not like movies yeah. at all. Like, I could say not liking a genre yeah. of movies. Oh, but like, I don't like action movies. Yeah. But like, no, he doesn't like movies. <laughs> now, is it that he, he doesn't... Want, he doesn't like movies because he doesn't like wasting his time. It, it, I think it's a lot of that. He is so high strung that to sit and not do anything for an hour and a half plus, I think it kills him. So I think that's a lot he of He feels it. like he's wasting his time. I got, I gotcha. I, yeah. That's why I don't read books. <laughs> I feel like I could be doing more of like, oh, I'm gonna, what am I going to do? Sit here and you can, like, you can only read a book, right? <laughs> yeah. At least if I'm here, like, in my room watching a movie, I can be on the internet. Yeah, you I can't can read a book. A yeah, sweater. You can't read a book and fuck around on the computer. Yeah. And you can't fold, read a book. Folding laundry. You can't read a book and jerk off. Well, I guess you can. But... Uh, yeah, but it's going to be a pretty erotic book. I like To Kill a Mockingbird. That's pretty erotic. <laughs> There's some underlying gay tones in that move in that book. Oh, Boo Radley, take your shirt off. <laughs> <laughs> Boo Radley. Yep. Good times. <laughs> but yeah, so we saw we saw Wreck It Ralph separately, and uh, because we subscribe to the separate but equal rule. <laughs> yes, for sure. And also we subscribe to the Scott's not here. What's the most fun thing we can do? How much fun can we have without Scott? I feel like. My friends hate me. <laughs> well, only when you're out of town. I'm a, I am will say this. 
Personally, I'm a little mad at Rhode Island, the state. The state. For the not, state, not the man. Not the, well, not the people in Rhode Island, because we, we sometimes refer to Drew as Ro- Rhode like the Rhode Island, right? Uh-huh. I'm, I'm a little mad at the state of Rhode Island for not allowing you to not leave the state. <laughs> and you having to stay there for the rest of your natural life. <laughs> Would have made it a lot easier to be here. <laughs> and, and do just the most fun things. Yes. Because <laughs> immediately we're like, hey, should we record a podcast while Scott's not here? And we're like, yeah, we totally should. What else can we do? But then we're like, oh, but that's something that's not fun that we can do with Scott. <laughs> <laughs> or I think that's what like, Justin said, I think. <laughs> So, of course, the thing that we decided to do is like, okay, we can do anything. What do we do? Oh, let's go see a movie. <laughs> Something very, we would do with you anyway. Very inventive, guys. <laughs> and then, uh, like, I said, oh, man, when Scott gets back, I'm just going to be really mean to him and make him think that we don't even want him as a friend. <laughs> like, just like, oh, man, you know what was so much fun? The time we went to the movie without Scott. <laughs> I think my problem, and this is partly on me, is that I project an air of uh, not not being phased by these things, whereas, uh, truth be told, I- inside, I am just grumbling emotionally. <laughs> like, this this stuff destroys me. I've torn, I've torn down your emotional walls. <laughs> yeah, so... <laughs> no anyway. barricades around your heart anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so if you want... Yeah, if you could take it for, like, the next 15 minutes, I'm, I'm gonna weep softly in softly. the corner. Okay. <laughs> I was gonna say that. I just thinking about it is like okay. So you saw you saw, Wreck It Ralph, which is a DreamWorks production. Yes, I think it was DreamWorks, wasn't it? Disney. Is it really a Disney? Yep. But it wasn't a Pixar. Di- yeah, was Disney it? not Pixar, which I thought was okay. Weird. So Disney not Pixar. So you you're not opposed to seeing animated movies, but you will not see a Pixar movie. Yeah, and actually, I thought this was. I'm like, oh shit, I'm breaking the streak. I'm like, oh, just Disney, <laughs> awesome. You you saved yourself. Yep. So, so, you will sit through an animated movie as long as it's not a Pixar movie. Sure. <laughs> this this is a rule, like, I haven't... Like, I have never made a point of adhering to this rule. It's just happened. It's not written in stone, yeah. but it might be written in blood. It could be, yeah. And now I feel... I'm kind, I'm kind of in it to win it at this point, so I, I feel like I can never see a Pixar movie. That's uh, a shame, because there are some good ones. There aren't, are some bad ones. Aren't they... Been. Like, the most of the good ones, like... Which sounds like most of them, besides the Cars franchise, yeah, um, aren't like most of them like kind of emotionally destroying. Yeah, yeah like it's th- Disney, of course, it's underlying emotional. That's tones. A, like they're essentially kids movies, but like just they, horrible things happen. Yeah, kids movies designed to to. It's you know, like when you're in high school and they say... Walt like, Disney likes to see kids cry, yes? Oh, 100%. Okay. Especially Jewish children. Especially Jewish children. Uh, I, the way I look at Disney Pixar movies is it's like high school, where they tell you that they're preparing you for post-high school life and, and <laughs> university and college, but really all they're doing is just fucking with your psyche <laughs> and making you like, oh, man, when I graduate high school, I don't know what I'm going to do with my life. Oh my god. And that's what they're doing, is they're preparing you for, like, well, you know, someday your mom and dad are going to die. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and you're going to be all alone. Does every Disney movie uh, involve the death of a parent? 100%. I'm going to say yes. <laughs> or an absentee parent, because in Toy Story, no dad. Right. Only a mom. I say right like I know. I haven't seen it. <laughs> you're aware. <laughs> but, yes, so, Wreck-It Ralph, uh, uh, I liked it, but not as much as other animated movies i thought it was eh, i don't know i don't even know what what my exact problem with it was i just think that i've seen so many animated movies now they all just kind of jumble together for me the only i think the only reason we saw it is because we saw the preview and you know there was uh bowser and like, yeah all the, the, there there is the scene that cost them eight billion dollars yeah. in licensing yeah which the thing and then when we, when we were watching it i i was a little annoyed that um, no, 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 I'm not even annoyed, but I was like, I was expecting there to be more, like, more Sonic, more Street Fighter, more actual video games, as opposed to yeah. making video games and then Matt putting them in, but then I also remember, like, oh, if they did that, the licensing would have cost them, like, a shit ton, more, more money than they would have made on yeah. the movie, so I guess I understood that, but, yeah. I don't know, to me, it's just, I, meh, I, it was fine, there was nothing special uh, exa- about it. My, th- my thoughts exactly, I thought it was fine, I thought it was, you know, like a two, two and a half star movie. Yeah, like, and I like people that were in it. Yeah, like, but... yeah, I, if I had to give it a thumbs up or down, I'd probably, you know, probably 
slightly up. Yeah, but uh, it was enjoyable for sure. Yeah, it, but yeah, just n- n- you know, nothing great, and it ha- it had its flaws. <laughs> yeah, there. See, here's the thing: is I don't judge animated movies because I realize they're made for kids. Yeah, but there was definitely some major issues like, in that movie. Like key things, like I can you can let some stuff go because yeah, it's a kids movie and it's and that's who it's mainly geared to. But like when like key key plot points that like that it that are like like incongruous to the the entire theme of the movie. It's it's a little jarring actually because the uh, the the two big issues I had were uh, the because like the whole theme of the movie is uh, you know you're 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 kind of programmed to do one thing but but with within that programming you can you know you, you're you have some freedom in there and then but the the but the being pro- programmed is an important part of it and then uh, in in the one sort of made-up video game where most of the movie takes place, the king of it... Oh, which I also have to talk about the king. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, just goes into, like, the physical code of the game and can change whatever he wants, which, like, mm-hmm. kind of fucks with the whole point of the Concept movie. Of the movie, yeah, for sure. And then... And the other thing... The other thing I understand, but don't... I understand why they had to do it, but I don't like it. Um, because there's, like, there's, with Sarah Silverman's character, there's basically a reveal where she, for most of the movies, she's basically, I'm, I'm gonna spoil stuff, so, I don't think so it fuck you. It's a goddamn animated movie, I don't yeah. think people care. so, for most of the movies, she's, she's basically a street rat, right? Yeah, <laughs> is, yeah, yeah, is that accurate? Yeah. Uh, but in actuality, she's, she's the princess of it and has been, like, deprogrammed by the king. Um. The evil king. Yeah. Um, but, uh. And when Ralph sees on, like, the outside, the side of the, uh, the whole video game console, he sees that she's on it, so she obviously is supposed to be part of the game, but she's not in her princess attire, which she absolutely should be. Yeah, she's in her regular clothes. Which is totally fucked up. And the reason they couldn't do that is because it gives away the reveal at the end, but then don't do it because it doesn't make sense. Okay, and back to the king. <laughs> back to the king. Who's Alan Tudyk, who is awesome. Oh, Alan Tudyk, you're, you're a comedic genius yeah. for the most part. So, it was a... I was going to say it's a weird choice. I can't imagine it was his choice. Someone told him to. Um, he, straight up, as the king of the video game, <coughs> did Ed Wynn as the Mad Hatter in Alice in Wonderland. Like, and not, like, sort of like an, oh, like, that reminds me of that. He's like, no, that just is that. And he looked like him, too. Oh, yeah, 100%. Just replace the hat with a crown, yeah. and you're there. Yeah, yeah. So, I thought it was weird to, like, just straight up do the same Disney character again. I uh, Granted, there's a 50, right around 50 years in between, but uh, still weird, I thought. It's Disney. I'm never surprised at anything Disney does. Yeah. I another thing that I really did not like, really did not like was, I understand that it is a kids movie, but they have to understand that a lot of people that see that movie are like, younger adults and even like mid age adults, right? especially people who like video games. Yeah, exactly, right. But uh, like, the the amount of stupid dialogue between Sarah Silverman's character and and Wreck It Ralph, just yeah. like I I was sitting there literally sitting in my seat thinking to myself like. Uh, this is so dumb. Like, I hate this movie. It's, like, only when that part was on. Because yeah. it's like, you know, like, they're they're hurling insults at each other. But oh, they're yeah. like, poopy, fart face jokes. Like, yeah, they're, that was actually one of the first thing uh, uh, Fatter Drew and I said to each other coming out of the movie was like, eh, I like that. It was a decent movie. Um, however, <laughs> every joke was bad. <laughs> Every like, joke was aimed towards five-year-olds. The movie would have been ten times better had they taken all the jokes out. Yeah. <laughs> Just make it a straight-up movie about like, the storyline. the biggest thing dragging the movie down was the jokes. Oh, just brutal. Brutal yeah. jokes. The one thing I will say from that is, I would love to see B-roll footage of Sarah Silverman saying filthy oh, things. Saying things that could because never the, go yeah, in a there, Disney movie. There are so many opportunities for her to just say oh, the yeah. most disgusting things. Yeah. 
And, and I'm I, sure she did. Um, I sh- guarantee she did. And it's I, I would never be a DVD extra. That's the thing. They can't even a, be an yeah. extra on the Disney DVD, but, so that sucks. But, God, that would be awesome to hear. Yeah. Did you see her on Conan... A no, you told you told me about it, but I yeah. didn't. Because she was watch promoting it. Wreck It Ralph, a Disney movie, and she spent the majority of the interview. Uh, she took an iPhone picture of Conan's mouth sideways and then held it vertically uh, above her crotch and made a phone pussy. <laughs> <laughs> and then Conan had the excellent line: "I wish I hadn't shaved my beard." <laughs> Oh, she is a classy broad, that one. And then, like, halfway through the interview, Conan just lost his shit, saying, I just remembered you were here to promote a Disney movie. (laughs) 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 Like, he had totally... Because she was so filthy, he had totally forgotten what she was there to do. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) And it was the complete opposite of what she was doing. to be fair, nobody watching Conan is is a kid going to see that movie, so they can do whatever they want. Yeah, totally. No, Scott, I have to ask you a I don't like, serious uh, question. First of all, I don't like this tone, but well, continue. I need to ask you a serious question. It needs to be asked. Do you need to ask me in this tone? Yes, <laughs> okay. 100%. All right. Now, how uncomfortable did it make you to have a character played by Jack McBriar and a character played by Jane Lynch wanting to fuck each other? <laughs> that, those are, yeah... Two people who, even in animated form, should never be fucking. And the thing, the thing I loved about it was the character for Jane Lynch looked exactly like Jane Lynch. She only looked like, like a little, hot, hot young Jane yeah, Lynch, younger Jane Lynch. Yeah, and that, that could not have made me more uncomfortable. Yeah, the fact that they, a man who unopenly gay, or is he openly gay? I'm not sure, but he's gay. I can <laughs> only assume. There's no way he's not. Gay. I've heard him talk. Yes. So yes. <laughs> And Jane Lynch, who is obviously a rug muncher. 100%. The most rug. (laughs) Fine fine Persian rugs. Fine (laughs) Persian rugs. Just the two of them being love interests, even in an animated movie. Uncomfortable. Very uncomfortable. Yeah, really, Jane Lynch looked way too much like Jane Lynch. And (laughs) Justin and Kelly and I are sitting in the theater looking at each other going like, I don't like this, I don't Uh like this. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. (laughs) Uh-uh, (laughs) uh-uh. I could just imagine the two of them, the animated versions of them, in in bed, Ugh. trying to figure out what to do. I, uh, do uh, Does it go in here? Do uh, I don't know. Do I stand on my head? <laughs> do, you, uh, do you go behind me, or do I go behind you? Hmm. Maybe if we just sort of scissor. <laughs> like just, Something will link yeah, up. Just so weird. Yeah. No, that's just a comedy of errors. <laughs> very, very, very big comedy of errors. Yeah. Um, <laughs> did uh, uh, I feel like are you okay? <laughs> yeah, no, just, All right. uh, just a brief lapse. Uh, pausing. Did we? I feel like we did. Did we talk about Argo and or the Master previous? Yeah, episode? we did. I, I feel think like last time we talked about it. All right, so that's covered. Um, and we were talking. I've got a segue. If you want to, well, I still have other movies I wanted to talk about briefly. I know. I've got a segue into one of your movies. Which one? Do you know what the other one was that I saw? No. Okay, so it must be this one. Yeah. Oh, okay. Is that okay, or do you want to segue to the other one first? The other one's not really much of a talk, but All right. we'll do we'll do this. No, because we're gonna end with that one, I think, or like. All right. Build to it. Well, we're gonna have to dance around because my segue was from the master. I I was gonna say I, I and I probably said it when we talked about it. I wouldn't be surprised if Joaquin or Philip Seymour was nominated for an acting Oscar, but they're probably going to have to look out because Daniel Day-Lewis made a movie this year and when he does, he usually wins an Oscar. <laughs> uh, yeah, so for spe- sure. So well, speaking of not Lincoln, what's the other well, movie the, you the, saw? The, the other two movies were tonight, uh, which is opening night, I saw Lincoln, and last week on opening night, I saw Skyfall. Oh, right, yeah. Now, Skyfall... Um, I've heard good. See, here's, here's what I... It was an awesome movie, and like I said, and I will stand by this point, it was much better than The oh, Dark yeah, you Knight said Rises. Oh, smoked Batman, yeah. Much better than The Dark Knight Rises. Kind of similar storyline okay. to it, yeah. but like much better. And uh, Javier Bardem, much better than Bane. Like, as far as a character and 
acting in the movie. And, and fuckability. 100%. Yeah. Because he's Hispanic and they are oh, sexy, hairless bodies. That accent. Um, that accent. <laughs> but also, too, just the fact that I find, found that Batman was kind of... They were forcing it. I think I've said that before, that it felt like it was forced because they had the Joker, yeah. and they couldn't do the Joker anymore, so they had to force out something to make it... Because was the plan with not dead Heath Ledger to have the Joker in the third one? I think so, or as far as I understand. I think that's that the what I... idea was to continue the Joker Batman. That's what, that's what I thought. And so then when they realized... I think they, they did a good job with what they had. I... But they didn't have... You know, they didn't have a big villain to pick from, because they... No, because once you get past the Joker, the Joker's the big one. The big one I mean, so. you can't do the Riddler because the Riddler's not a great villain. And I think Jim Carrey was filming Mr. Popper's Penguins. So yeah, I think he was so. busy. <laughs> not to get off topic, but the villain in Kick Ass Two, Jim Carrey, Jim Carrey which yep. I actually can get behind. Uh, and he's like a like something he's a general mi- military or dude. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, that should be interesting. I can one hundred percent get behind that. Yeah, no, I think that'll be cool. But anyway, so with Skyfall, is that again? This was a movie where after they made Quantum of Solace and then a couple of years passed by, the Bond franchise almost went completely bankrupt. Right. They had no money left to make any movies. Uh, they weren't even sure if Daniel Craig was going to do it. Mm-hmm. They were already looking at replacements. And then through some Hollywood miracle, they they managed to pull together the, you know, the studios and the whatever yeah. to, to film this movie. And the thing is, it... It did seem a little bit forced because it doesn't necessarily tie in directly with the other two that Daniel Craig are in. Like, uh-huh. for the most part, with the other ones, they would sort of... Every actor that was a Bond would all kind of tie into the other movies yeah. they were in, and I think, sort of. I think the most so with the first two Daniel Craigs. Yes, yeah, yeah for sure, because it was back-to-back. Yeah. Right? Like, it was, as soon as Casino Royale ended, that was when they picked up Quantum Assault. Yeah, and I, I don't think any other two Bond movies are that intertwined no, no, as, no, not as all, these not two. Yeah. Um, but even the Pierce Brosnan ones were sort of like... Yeah, you know, but like, there's a bit of a thread to them. They would at least m- sort of play into the storyline of the one before. Yeah. So this one didn't necessarily have anything to do directly with the first two, uh-huh. other than the fact that you know they were they made it known that same Bond, you know, and some of the characters. If you had never seen the first two, you wouldn't know who they were. Right. But the the actual thing is like with Bond movies, it's usually like there's a bad guy who's part of this terrorist organization, taking over, trying to take over something or blow up something. Or, or in the case of was it Quantum of Solace? Uh, what, like, raise the price of water in Bolivia by 30%? Yeah. And that makes them a goddamn... <laughs> Those Bolivians need their worldwide water. Worldwide terrorist? That was the weakest uh, uh, evil plot <laughs> that I have ever heard of. It is, it is pretty bad. Um, I know a lot of people did not like that movie. I was not a huge fan of it. It didn't do much for me. I, I really liked Casino Royale. Casino Royale is good. And the the opening, uh, like on foot chase scene, in Casino Royale is goddamn awesome. Is that when they fight on the crane? I think so. And like the dude he's chasing is like straight up parkouring yeah. it, and it's yeah, yeah it's yeah. That's, awesome. That's really awesome. I know a lot of people I've talked to have said that they like Casino Royale better than this one. Um, I would put them pretty close. Pretty close. I don't know which one I could choose because I like them both like a lot. Yeah, most reviews I've heard say this is as good as, if not a little better than Casino mm-hmm. Royale. So well, the thing that, that I sounds liked, good to me. The thing I... that I liked about it was that in uh, the Bond movie, yeah, like I said in the Bond movies, it's like you know, a villain doing something and gadgets and explosions and gunfights and whatever. Yeah. And that, blah, blah, blah. This one actually had. A plot and a story, and mm-hmm. you know it, it exposed a lot of stuff in the Bond world right. that you didn't really get to see in previous ones. Mm-hmm. I mean, Moonraker, you don't exactly know anything about Bond's past because Moon he's in space. Moonraker, no, that's Moon River. Hmm. Same thing. Uh, yeah, they probably there was a there was a river. Did, did Andy Williams do the song for Moonraker? Of course. <laughs> Yeah, there was a there was a river on the moon, and he sang a song about it. Oh man, if any old people are listening to this, they're loving fucking Andy Williams references right now. I or, didn't or, think he was gonna do Moon River, and then bam, bam, second encore. <laughs> um, but yeah, anyways, I, I thought it was as a movie, it was really good. Mm-hmm. Um, and even, even as a Bond movie, there's a lot of lot of uh, uh, throwbacks to some of the older movies, and 
Uh, some good acting. Uh, Javier Bardem was was really good. I really enjoyed him. Someone I can't remember total who. creep in it. Hundred percent. Someone definitely, po- without spoiling anything, tries to fuck Bond. Spicy. No, very spicy. <laughs> I can get behind that. I hope he does. I'm I'm straight, but fucking Javier Bardem, fucking Daniel Craig. I'm not a big Daniel Craig fan. Although I thought he was good in this one, but I no, guess, I guess I'd, I'd, I'd watch that. I'd watch those guys fuck. He, he's chiseled. <laughs> What was I say? Oh yeah, um, someone posited the theory that uh, Javier Bardem is a terrible actor in his native language and is just awesome in English with that <laughs> accent. I'm yeah. like, you might not be wrong. <laughs> well, you know what? I think that might that might stand true for all Spanish actors because I've seen there was a movie released last year with uh, Antonio Banderas in it, uh-huh. and it's a Spanish movie. That, not very good. He's I bet not that very is. Good in it. Very much the case with Antonio Banderas. And he is actually. awesome in He English. is a classic example of that. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I think Spanish Americans got it easy. 100%. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so then, okay, so leading into your segue of Lincoln. Yes. So I saw Lincoln. This dude has fucking notes on this. Now, were these? I good? didn't want to forget anything. No, I, I appreciate it. I wrote them when I got home, not in the movie. I was going to say, did you, were, did you nerd out and take them down in the theater or do it afterwards? No, but I was thinking about it while I was in the movie theater. And yeah. then was like, oh, sure, that time when I get home. Oh, sure, that time when I get home. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> the now, pieces from that time frame of the Civil War-ish area, era, and, like, Revolutionary War, all that early American stuff. Oh. So what, that's, like, 1958? Yeah, it's a current time. Ish? <laughs> yeah, around that time. Okay. Um, the, the way I... If you're listening it, and didn't know that was a joke, stop listening, because we have nothing in common. <laughs> you, yes, oh, God. <laughs> if you didn't realize that was a joke and you live in America, you need to learn some history about your own country. Yeah. America. Or herstory. <laughs> That's patriarchal society. Brutal. Uh, anyways, so the way I look at it is, and I've heard this review made about a few, like Gettysburg for one, is that people who generally make movies from that time frame are like super nerds about that time frame. Yes. Like they're really into the Civil War or they're yeah. really, really into the Revolutionary War. So, a lot of the stuff involved in those movies is, like, right down to, like, the exact detail of, like, what, like, what position the chair was in that he was sitting in. Totally. And, like, uh, so, when I saw a preview for this, I assumed that's what it was going to be like, because I watched all four hours of Gettysburg, and that is exactly what it is. Like, oh, one time he had this conversation with somebody where he mentioned this word, and it has nothing to do with the plot of the movie at all. But we had to do it, because it happened. But it had to do it, because it's historical fact. Um, (sighs) Four hours of Gettysburg, that's a lot of Gettysburg. Here's the thing. Jeff Daniels is really watchable in that movie. I really like Jeff Daniels. He is very good in that movie. So that definitely... Have I said on air that Jeff Daniels is goddamn awesome on the newsroom? Because if I haven't, he is. And so is Sam Waterston, and you should watch that show. I think we briefly touched on it. I still haven't watched it yet, but now that I've found that website, I can watch it. Oh yeah, the website that... (laughs) Don't spread it. I don't want to go to jail. The website, we won't say what it is, but it's a website, I guess it's a .uk? Something like that. .co.uk? Uh, that has every TV show ever aired yes. for streaming. It was crazy. Yeah, so um, go find it and watch some TV. You can find some stuff, yeah. Um, but, yeah, it, there was definitely a lot of of uh, sitting in a room with a bunch of guys having conversations. Yeah. And I don't know that a, all of it was necessary for the movie, especially because the runtime of the movie is say... 149 minutes. Okay. So that's a long time two and for, a half, yeah. for there to be just a bunch of conversations. Like some of them obviously were very important to the storyline. Some, but not some so much. of them were just there because they were nerdy, like Lincoln marks. I guess Spielberg's really into Lincoln. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you know who else of, is really into Lincoln? Speaking of being really into Lincoln, other men. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Secret gay. Possibly the the best and secretest gay. Yeah, could be. Well, him or Jack McBriar. Uh, if he's secret, he's got to fix that voice. He needs to... Because that's a gay voice. He needs to get rid of some... He, he needs to learn what a secret is. <laughs> <laughs> he needs to be taught what a secret is. Yeah. Um, but speaking of being in love with Lincoln is... Daniel Day-Lewis in this movie, for, like... 
he could not have been more, like, here's the thing. Nobody who's alive now ever met Lincoln, but if I could imagine Lincoln, that was exactly what I imagined Lincoln as. Because he he even played the fact that Lincoln wasn't really that loud-spoken. Yeah. He was kind of a quieter voice. Yeah. And then he did a southern twang, Mm -hmm. which was pretty goddamn perfect. Um, Well, I hear... This Daniel Day kid, he's a pretty good actor. He's an up and comer. He's coming, yeah. He's, a, he's got a good future ahead of him. He's making waves. Um, and so, uh, another thing in this is that uh, I understand with a, a long, a long winded talking Civil War era movie that you need to throw in something to keep the audience entertained. With tits. With Gettysburg, there was a lot of fighting, a lot of action. Tits. Uh, in, I think there's tits in. George, yeah, give me some tits! I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a bold prediction and say that there's tits in glory. <laughs> Denzel gets some titty action. Oh, yeah. But for this one, they threw in comic relief. Weird. But way too much comic relief. Really? Like, there had to be... I was expecting none. Funny jo- Like, there was... See, the thing is, like, every little insult that they would make had to be, like, done in the, the way that Authentic it was a joke. 1860s. Yeah, that yeah. it was a joke. Like it had to be made like that. Yeah, it wasn't like like just like an insult where you're you're being aggressive at the person and you're trying to like you're insulting the person to make them mad and you're not trying to and be it happen- funny and it happens to be funny exactly as opposed to straight up this was straight making up, a joke like, a zoom in on Tommy Lee Jones face and he makes a joke and then everybody else in the room laughs at <laughs> at the guy right like oh really huh like it was pr- there was a lot of not expecting that. silliness in it. Um, which I didn't overly enjoy as much, but... Which, by the way, I heard a good joke tonight. Uh, why do... Women's rights! <laughs> that's, nope. that's pretty funny, oh, too. Okay. Uh, why do debutantes hate group sex? Why? Too many thank you notes. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good. I thought that was cute. It's pretty good. Um... So obviously Daniel Day Lewis is the the lead actor in this. I, Who does I, he play? He plays. I'm not. I don't know what. I didn't actually write it down. Mary Todd. Uh, uh something like that. General Grant. General Grant. That's, that's it. the I think one. That's who he is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but the supporting cast of this movie. I'm could... oh, sorry. I have another s- totally stupid sidebar, which General Grant reminded me of. Um, it was on, actually, I don't know, I was going to say a previous trip to Rhode Island, but it was seeing the Rhode Island person, Drew, when he lived in Cleveland, and we saw a U.S. mail truck, USPS, and we decided that USPS stood for Ulysses S. Grant, President of the United States. (laughs) Stupid. What the fuck? 100% stupid. We were all retarded. Were you high? It seems like we were. Did you get wet? But, <laughs> yeah, we like to get wet. You do like to get wet. I do. <laughs> Can I finish my Lincoln talk? You may... Not. Not. <laughs> uh, anyways, the supporting cast this movie I, I loved. Uh, from, you know, <laughs> Sally Fields was good. Uh, Tommy, Wait, there's more than one? Tom Lee Jones was good. What, more than one supporting cast? No, more than one Sally Field. Oh, Sally Field, whatever. What are you, a black guy? I was combining Sally Field with Sally Field was good. What are you, What are you, Tracy Tracy Morgan talking to Jay Moore? Yo, Jay Moore, you want to get nice? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, but, yeah, so it was David Streetherian, who's good. He's from the Bourne movies and LA Confidential. Oh, I thought he was a character in Game of Thrones with that name. <laughs> You'd think so. The Straitharians. The Straitharians. Um, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, who's good. Really fat James Spader. I love... Who, I, I think I like fat James Spader better than skinny James Spader. Yeah, I love his turnaround from 1980s skinny nerd to 2012 fat guy. <laughs> yeah. With thinning hair. Yep. Um... And then uh, we were actually discussing off air our two current favorite uh, re- recent fat guys, <laughs> fat guys, James Spader and Dave, Dave Foley. One hundred percent. I love when comedians get fat. <laughs> um, uh, Hal Holbrook, who's an older guy, he's in Wall Street. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, John Hawks, who's I don't know. Is Hal Holbrook the guy who plays Mark Twain, or is that a different Hal something? Hal Johnson. Hal. 
and Joanne, Joanne McLeod. Idiot! From Body Break. <laughs> no. <laughs> You're wrong. I love the reference that no one will get. I think it might be Hal Holbrook. I think Maybe. He, he, like, he did, like, performances as Mark Twain. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. If he's got... You you continue talking. I'm looking up Hal okay. Holbrook. Uh, yeah, John Hawks, who people will re- recognize they saw him. Uh, Jackie Earl Haley's pretty good from Watchmen. Yep. Zorschak. Bruce McGill. I swear to God, I thought you were going to say from Bad News Bears. <laughs> Bad News Bears. Um, Bruce McGill, who's in fucking everything. Yeah. Um... Jared Harris, who plays... Uh, I know that name. Ulysses S. Grant. Uh, President of the United States. States. <laughs> he's, uh, he's in Natural Born Killers and Resident Evil Apocalypse. I even wrote down what they were in so that people would... What a guy. And uh, another person who's in this movie who I have said on many occasions, mostly on my blog, uh, which nobody goes to, <laughs> um, w- easily one of my favorite character actors of all time, uh, Tim Blake Nelson. He... Give me some things. Oh, Brother, Where Art Thou? Is, was he the third he's the guy? Third one. Okay. It's not Totoro or Clooney. Oh yeah, he's uh, very he's good. He's in adaptation. He's in. Right. He's in the new Incredible Hulk. Okay. Uh, love him. Honestly, everything he's in, awesome. Nice. Yeah. Um, and note for the record, Hal Holbrook is indeed the Mark Twain guy, and is also known for playing Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Which is probably why they cast him, even though he wasn't playing well, Lincoln. Well, Dave, Dave, David Strathairian played. Lincoln in a previous movie. I actually read that on the IMDb. Oh, thing. maybe they cast everyone who's ever played Lincoln. <laughs> maybe. That's interesting. Tommy Lee Jones ever be Lincoln? Sure. Sure he was. I, I can't confirm or deny, but I'm going to say sure. Uh, okay, so now going, I, I'm going to make the boldest prediction of my entire life. Do it! That this movie will set the record for most Oscar nominations. Really? Because in my mind, this movie could be got a lot of categories covered. Could be nominated for almost everything. Because you got costume, you yeah, got all the uh, sound editing, all the editing shit, yeah, uh, score, um, actor, makeup, actor, actor director, actor ones, pictures, pictures, all that stuff. I honestly believe, and you know, to be honest, like I would not be surprised if they win a lot of them. Like I could, like a hundred percent. Can you see it getting picture? Here's, here's the thing. Uh, what would it be up against, though? We don't. Well, I think we don't know yet. No, but like, what? What? I can't think of anything coming out that it would be like. The only movie. See, here's the thing. When Daniel, Day, when they saw Daniel Day Lewis was in this, I think me and everybody else's immediate thoughts were, "Fuck it, he's already won the Best Oscar. Actor, like it's yeah. over, it's done." The only person I thought would have a competition with him would be uh, Sir Anthony Hopkins for, for Hitchcock. Hitchcock. Yeah. But after seeing this movie. It is going to be an uphill battle for Anthony Hopkins to compete with this. Yeah. Like, uh, Gangs New York, he was great. There Will Be Blood, he was great. Yeah. But, like, this could be one of the best movies he's ever done. Like, wow. actually. Like, he was really good in it. So it's going to be really hard for Anthony Hopkins to compete with that. Yeah. But, uh, uh, Dan Lee Lewis for actor. Yeah. Tommy Lee Jones for best supporting. Uh, Sally it, Fields, maybe, for best. But it depends who, who else is nominated. Right. Um... And then Best Director, Steven Spielberg. Yeah. Uh, yeah it can, and then it's going to win all those like smaller ones, right? Like, yeah. Like cinematography and all that crap. Yeah. What, what's the record? Is Titanic well, I was going to ask you, most do you owners? know what the record is? And it's... The previous high was 14 by oh. two movies. Titanic and Ben-Hur? No, uh, not Ben-Hur. Or maybe that was Wins. Wins, maybe. I didn't check Wins. Yeah. I know Wins was 11 by somebody, but I didn't check who it was. Avatar had a lot, didn't it? Avatar had a lot, but it, did, it wasn't 14. Was Titanic one of them? Titanic was one. Um, what was the year for the other one? 1950. 50. What was 50? On the waterfront? Nope. Uh. It's too early for me. I've never seen it. Yeah. But it's not made before the 90s. Ni- it's made before the 90s, so I <laughs> So you've never seen it. Um, I'm probably not gonna get it. I, uh, I, I use my one good guess. <laughs> All About Eve. Okay. Not to be yeah. confused with All, All About, about Steve. Steve. The superior movie. Um, yeah, so, um... And then we talked about this earlier, I was going to mention it, but we can't, couldn't think of any, which was, now that they've done this, they have to do a George Washington biopic, and who, but who would play George Washington? Play Washington. I could not think of anybody that looks enough like Washington. Yeah, I'm just picturing because Washington's face. Daniel and... D. Lewis does look a lot like Lincoln. Yeah. Like, like off the bat. Yeah, immediately. Even without the, Pre-makeup. the, the mustache and the, yeah. the beard, sorry, and the and hair. Then, and the, the, the makeup, and he nails it. But like, who looks like George Washington? I, I honestly can't even think about anybody unless they just put a bunch of like prosthetics and makeup on somebody. Yeah, and but a wig. I don't know who it would be. Yeah, Hal Holbrook kind of looks like him, I guess, but yeah, he's, he's going to be dead soon. He's pretty he's old. He's in his eighties. Yeah. So. Um. 
So yeah, it's going to be a real, real interesting Oscars to see what this wins. And now, speaking of Oscars, I'm fucking, I'm I I've watched every Oscars for the last ten years, mm-hmm. and I usually see every single movie that's nominated for Best Picture. Best picture at least. Yeah. But they're making it tougher now with the goddamn ten nominations. I do not know that I want to watch next season, next year's. Do you know who's hosting? Uh, yes, but I absolutely heard who, and I've absolutely forgotten, and it was weird. Seth MacFarlane. Yes, that's right. Do not want to see this. I'm. St- I hate Seth MacFarlane now. He likes to sing. Even you know what? Even I didn't mind Ted, but even oh, fucking he is so not funny. Here's, here's he the thing. He has the same jokes for everything. He yeah. has to not do Family Guy voices in non-Family Guy settings. Which I guarantee you When he you did them in his do. SNL monologue, I'm like, ah, don't do it. And that's a problem with everybody only knows him for Family Guy and American yeah. Dad. Like, and... <sighs> he needs to get a new gimmick. He really yeah. does. He, he's got the worst He gimmick. needs to be repackaged. Mm. Um, okay, so, and I, I did sort of come up with a game for this uh, when I was doing this. A game that I asked <laughs> if it was fun, you said yes, but then <laughs> gave the disclaimer that I would not think it's as fun as it is. Yeah, like, I will think it's more fun than you will. Okay, these, these are the kind of games I enjoy where the other person <laughs> in, the person, enjoys it much more than the, me. The person hosting the game will have more fun than the person playing the game. Yeah. Um, okay, so the game is, now... People get very confused on this, on how many Oscars Daniel Day-Lewis has actually won. Yes. So, what I want to do is I'm going to name movies. I'm not going to tell you how many he's actually won. Uh-huh. And I'm going to name the movies, and I want you to tell me if he did win. And on the bonus side of that will be if he didn't win, who did win. Ooh! That's pretty tough, but I think of the people that, you know, you could probably do it. Do I, The ones where he didn't win, do I get to know the other nominees? I didn't, I didn't write them down. I can look them up if you want. Uh, we'll, we'll see if it comes to that. Okay. So we'll start off with... I think I know how many he's won. Okay. My Left Foot. Uh, yes. He won. Last of the Mohicans. No. Who did he lose to? God, do you have the year? Uh, it's 1993, so it would have been 94. So, Hanks. But 94. What lost to Hanks? To, for what movie? You know, one of them. <laughs> Uh, 94, four, uh, wait, Forrest Gump, I feel like Forrest Gump was made in 94. Uh, no, no, I'll say Forrest Gump. Uh, it was AIDS Burger in Paradise. Ah, AIDS Burger in Paradise! Yeah, Philadelphia. Um. <coughs> so Gump was made in 1994. Yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, In the Name of the Father. Uh, no. Was he nominated? I'm gonna say no. He was not nominated. Yeah. Odd, because I've heard that Pro- movie's very probably good. Probably should have been. Uh, Gangs New York. Nominated and didn't win. Who did he lose to? Year. 2007. 2006. Uh, 2007. Give me a second. <laughs> I can't remember what year it was. It's uh, it's in there. I oh, want it. Oh, 2002. Oh. 2002. Close. Um, 2002. I don't know why I thought it was so much later. Uh, is that Denzel Washington? Nope. Uh, what one best picture in 2002? I can often work backwards from that. Best Picture O two was uh, where did it go? American Beauty, Gladiator, Beautiful Mind. Oh, if it was O two, then maybe Russell Crowe. Nope. So it's the one after Russell Crowe, which I thought was Denzel Washington, but it's not. So now I'm fucked. See what you did to me, Drew. <laughs> Sorry. Will it help you if I tell you that the, dire- the director is a convicted rapist? Polanski or the guy who directed Powder. <laughs> It was the guy who directed Powder. Excellent. Was he, it Powder 2? Did someone win Best Actor for Powder 2? It was Powder 2. Powder keg. Uh, of course. Um, what did Polanski do in 02? I don't think I'm going to get this one, unfortunately. Uh, it was Adrian Brody for The Pianist. Uh, yeah. He lost Adrian Brody's Pianist. It would have been a while before I got that. Uh, yeah. Uh, there Will Be Blood. One. And nine. Did not win. Was he nominated? I'm going to say yeah. He was not. Oh. The only nomination that movie got was Penelope Cruz for Best Supporting. Fuck Penelope Cruz. I agree. She's not good in anything. Or good looking. Oh, you do you think she's good looking? We'll have to put that on the list. That's on the list. We will probably end up playing that tomorrow. My, yeah. The Would You Bang game. Yeah. My... It's separately, and then we discovered we share the same feelings. Uh, my dad and I hate the way Penelope Cruz looks. 
I don't know how I feel about her. I'd have to really think about it. Yeah, she she is an easy no. She for me. she is no Selma Hayek. She is no Selma Hayek. I like now Selma Hayek. on a on a completely unrelated note, the piece of paper that I wrote down all of my Lincoln related stuff on also has the insane ramblings of a madman. Yes. Okay. <laughs> the very top of this piece of paper was obviously when I was going to write down uh, notes for a movie we were watching. Okay. Because the top of the paper says the gayest thing Scott has ever said. We've now, already <laughs> been through this. But it just says at the top of my paper the gayest <laughs> thing Scott has ever said. Oh, no, not even what I said, even though it's been well documented what I said. And. That you like wieners in your butt. Was that it? That was what you said. That was the gayest thing you ever said. Oh, I did not remember that. That's... Followed closely by Neil McDonough's beautiful eyes. <laughs> Again, fact. I don't care. Look it up. It's in the. Dick- Look at his eyes. They're beautiful. Yeah. Fuck that. Strange how he always plays a bad guy. Although he wasn't... He well, he was the decoy bad guy in in that movie. Yeah, he was good good guy dad. Yeah. Hey, he's a good guy in Captain America. He's Dum Dum Dugan. Oh, yeah. But he's barely in that movie, so I'm going to stop talking about him. <laughs> yeah. What else yeah. is up? <laughs> I don't know. I think that we kind of ran through everything we were going to run through, so... Do we... Do we, do we want to do something? Something else? <laughs> do See what? Well, I was just gonna ask if you. Nah, that's more visual. I was just, if just wanted to jerk each other off. <laughs> that's two, not two that's, man circle jerk. Yeah, that's no good for a podcast. Dutch we, rudder. We can just do that. <laughs> we can just do that after. So yeah, we don't have to make people listen to it. Although I guess it, we shouldn't have said anything and then just say we're gonna do something now. See if you can guess what it is based on the sound. <laughs> And then we would fist a jar of mayonnaise. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was two guys working out in a gym. <laughs> I'm Barry Lakin. <laughs> um, I'm going to slip in right here. <laughs> oh, there it is. It's in. <laughs> we, we are definitely fucking. <laughs> we, are two, we are not working out. We are two guys fucking. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know what we're talking about, listen to early Adam Sandler CDs and reminisce on how he used to be funny in the 90s. Ugh. And it's now we, awful. We really need to get a copy of That's My Boy and Jack and Jill. We gotta watch Jack and Jill to, immediately. We need to get an internet burn of that, because none of us are gonna purchase it. No. I'm off my days of purchasing bad movies. <laughs> they were good days. I'm done with that. My life has gone full circle. Yeah, oh, no, that needs to be seen have sooner you, than later. Have you seen a preview for Life of Pi? Yeah. Do you think it's the weirdest movie that they ever needed to be made? Uh, like it didn't need to be made? I will give that a yes and then a but. Y- yes, in agreement with your statement, but it looks like the best movie of all time. It might be pretty visually appealing. It looks... And the fact that you're, he's trapped on a boat with a tiger. Yeah. <laughs> and then they become BFFs. Yeah. And cuddle. Yeah. So, yeah. Caters to my Today... interest, granted. Did they offer you I'm, the role of stunt double for the tiger? Like I, they did Jack Black in, <laughs> yes. in Nacho Libre? Exactly. And I I think I think I have a consulting producer credit on Life of Pi. Hmm. But yeah, yeah, and for those who don't know, I came semi close. I'm not gonna say close, but You were a finalist. It it came it came up that I could be the stunt double for Jack Jack Black in Nacho Libre. But, except for the fact that I'm much taller than him and not as fat as not him. Not as fat as him. Even though I'm pretty fat. <laughs> yes, but Jack Black is a, he, is a gargantuan monster. Yeah, and about five foot five. Really? He's that short? He's not a tall guy. Hmm. Yeah. I guess I can see that. He is short and stout. Yeah, but oh man, I am, yeah, I am watching the shit out of Life of Pi next Saturday. <laughs> I'll see it, but I don't... I, 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 have a, I have a day planned around it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think the weird is that now... That it's uh, almost well, it's like mid November. Movies start to come out on Wednesdays now. Not I saw it I, I like it because I remember here it opened on the twenty first. I'm like, twenty first is a Wednesday. Yeah. yeah, movies start to come out on a on a middle of the week now. I yeah, don't, I don't know why they do that. At... There's some reason. It's something about opening weekend box office stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when I saw the movie tonight for Lincoln. Uh, there's a lot of movies that come out on Christmas this year. Yeah. Uh, Django Unchained comes out on Christmas. Yes. Les Mis, mm-hmm. which surprisingly I will see because that is the only musical I actually like. Um, has an awesome cast. It although is. There is no Liam Neeson or Jeffrey Rush, but yeah, it is not the only musical I like. What is the only musical I like? 
Cats. There you go. Obviously. <laughs> if they make that movie, I'm seeing it. Otherwise, go fuck yourself. Do you think they could? I don't see why not. If they can make a, a movie about Les Mis. Yeah. Two movies about Les Mis. Yeah. Hmm. I also saw a preview for a uh, James Cameron directed Cirque du Soleil it, movie huh. that looks interesting, but it's Cirque du Soleil, so if you've seen it once, you've seen them all. Pretty much. I saw one when it was here last year, and it was good. I've seen, it's, a, it's a fun time. Yeah, I've seen Zero, and I feel like I've seen them all. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm neither for nor against it. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I enjoy, although I've seen, they've, they've done little performances on... What? I guess either America's Got Talent or So You Think You Can Dance. So I've seen... It's gotta be America's Got Talent. I guess they're doing it on So You Think You Can Dance. No, I guess Once they're not. they're doing a dance number, they do come some of those. Don't yeah, they? but no, they, they definitely do some impressive shit. Mm. So, yeah, credit where it's due. Well, well done, uh, slave labor Russian acrobats. <laughs> 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 well done. Well, I think they've got a lot of... They, they've diversified a little. Yeah? they got some... Because the... Uh, I don't really want to get into it, but the... The interview that I saw, they did the, the main girl, she's American. American. Because James Cameron's involved and he only likes Americans. <laughs> I don't know. James Cameron can suck my wiener. I saw James Cameron at a KFC drive through once. Fact. When they were filming uh, Dark Angel here. Hmm. Yep. Yeah. And you were working at a KFC? <laughs> no, I was... <laughs> Why do I have to be working there to see him? Because he was why the couldn't drive through. Why couldn't I be eating there? That's, I don't know, that's weird. I was, if I remember right, I, w- I was, we were eating in, and then car, it was some, um, possibly in Escalade? Uh, yeah, goddamn, Cameron in Escalade drives out of the driver, we're like, that's James Cameron. <laughs> Scott, I'm going to tell you right now, I am very mad that you didn't run outside and pull him out of his car and murder him before he made Avatar. Got a lot of Oscar nominations. I don't know what your problem don't is. Don't care. A lot of bad movies get Oscar nominations. I I regret the fact that I was so gay for that movie when I saw it. Fern Gully 2009, yeah, baby. Yeah, not... Ugh. And the thing is, I am really not looking forward to them making two more of that movie. I forgot they were doing that. That's, you know what? Like It starts off with... I'm a man who has made it very outspoken that I do not like the Star Wars trilogies. I'm going to be so mad when they make three or ten more. <laughs> it probably would be ten, first of all. <sighs> Secondly, I all I I don't hate the Star Wars trilo- uh, two trilogies as much as oh no, I don't hate the first one as much as you. I probably do hate the newer trilogy as much as you because those are some of the worst movies ever made. Yeah. Um, but I. I don't, I, it certainly doesn't need to happen, but I don't care if they do make new ones, because now that Disney bought it, there's a chance, well, it's most likely they're going to be at least better than the other ones, because George Lucas is staying the fuck away yeah. from it, and, and Disney, he is a monster. Dis- oh, he's a terrible monster. Disney's going to throw all their eggs in that goddamn basket, too. Yeah. But they're going to spend as much money yeah. as they can. And I, I think it was... Wasn't it the purchase largely so they could have Star Wars rides yeah. at Disneyland? Yeah, that's yeah. essentially the reason. And then if they're they like, ah, we'll make some movies. If they make more movies, they can make more toys and video games. And, and... pretty much, no matter what they do, each movie will make a billion dollars. Yeah, pretty so... much. I don't know. I'm just I'm not excited about it at all. Oh no, I do, I don't know if I'll end up seeing them. I did. did I, I probably all... never see. Did them. I see all the new Star Wars? I saw no. I think I just saw one and three, and uh, they were both. God awful. I saw one because <coughs> myself and my two friends went to see Deep Blue Sea in 1999, and my mom yeah. bought us tickets, and her, my grandma, and my sister went to see another movie, and when we went to go in, they would not let us in because we were 99, it would have been 15, 14? Yep. And they would not let us into the movie, and the only other movie that was playing at that Star time Wars. was Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. Went in that theater, and I'm pretty sure we talked through the whole thing. Fair. Didn't even watch it. And then I saw the third one on, like, the, probably, like, the last day it was in theaters, because I yeah. felt obligated to see it, because I'm like, oh, they bring in Darth Vader, like, cool, whatever. But I hated it. Hated it. And, yeah, the, only, and the thing that... The thing that very I, bad. Like, I love Harrison Ford, so I should love the first three. Or, like, I guess the second three. I uh-huh. should love it, but nope. You are wrong, people who think I should have loved that movie, because yeah. Indiana Jones, those movies, I top top of my list, but 
Like, ugh. God damn it, Disney, why do you do things? Yeah. Yeah, that, that's that, interesting. And the fact that they're p- going to pump out two more Pirates of the Caribbean movies. Two more? Two more. Yikes. Oh, so how many you, have I, I feel like... You've seen I've, one. I might have seen two. Seen two? Um, I so, definitely... There are what? There are four? There's four, yeah. Yeah, I guarantee I haven't seen three or four. Speaking of Pirates of the Caribbean and the star of Pirates of the Caribbean, Johnny Depp, before the movie today, I saw a preview for The Lone Ranger. Yes. Now, Lone Ranger and Tonto, who is his Indian sidekick, yes. played by Johnny Depp, is billed as the star of the movie. Because he's fucking So drunk. then, why don't you call it Tonto? Can't do it. Like, even the, the poster is a picture of... Johnny Depp's face. Weird. Like, uh... Who, who's the Lone Ranger? Some fucking guy. Some new... Well, he's not really a new guy, but he's not a well-known guy. He plays the twins in Social Network. Okay. Yeah. So... I get it. He's not a star. You can't build a movie around him. But the movie is not Johnny Depp. Like, Maybe it is. And, you know who's in that movie? Fucking Helena Bonham Carter. And it's not even oh, directed. And it's not even a Burton it's joint? It's not even directed by Burton, but she's fucking in it. That's so unacceptable. So now her and Johnny Depp can only be in the movies together. Don't like it. I'm guessing that was a Depp demand. Probably. I will never see Dark Shadows, because that movie looks oh, fucking man. brutal. Yeah. Seriously. You know what? I generally like Johnny Depp. Except for the fact that Tim Burton has ruined him for me. <laughs> Pretty much. Because if Tim Burton would just cast other people in his fucking movies... They'd probably still be awful. They'd still be awful. But no, I mean, like, then I would, he wouldn't have ruined Johnny Depp. Yeah, no, I, I agree. A lot of, all, honestly, I think most of the non-Tim Burton Johnny Depp movies I really like. And then the Johnny Depp Tim Burton movies, I like one. Edward Scissorhands, that's it. Yeah. I don't think, I don't even really like Sleepy Hollow that much. Sleepy it's always okay, okay. But Who, Kelly likes it a lot, right? Kelly's really gay for it. Yeah. But Kelly's really gay for a lot of things, like men's dicks. Fair. Um, yeah. What other Hollywood business did I hear about? I th- I heard that um, the new um, Zombieland movie, mm-hmm. the cameos, like the celebrity cameo, because you know they had Bill Murray. The, the, the Bill one. Murray. Apparently, from what I've heard in the second one, the cameo is a lunatic, which I really hope is true. It is Mel Gibson essentially playing Mad Max. Whoa. Like himself as Mad Max. That's that interesting. That would be goddamn awesome. When I heard Lunatic, first thing that came to mind was Gary Busey. Oh. Mm-hmm. But Mel Gibson also fits that bill. Yes, and I hope that there is a anti-Semite tirade on set that gets him kicked off like it did of Hangover 2. Hangover 2, yeah. Because Zack did not like him. Nope. Even though Zach's Zach... not a Jew, is he? No. But he didn't he, appreciate he, it. Zack is a Greek. A, um, Greek. a Greek Jew? There's those, right? There's gotta be those. There might be. No, because uh, if there was great Jews, their economy wouldn't be in the shitter. That's true. They'd have their shit together. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Zach basically said, yeah, kick off Mel Gibson or I walk, yeah. basically. Yeah, which is fair. And then he talked about it before it was released to the news on an episode of, uh, at the time, Comedy Death Ray, hmm. and then got uh, Scott Ackerman in a whole lot of shit. <laughs> Fun fact. How is that Scott Ackerman's fault? I guess because he asked him the question. He didn't, oh, he didn't, he yeah. didn't even really. Because Scott didn't know. Like, Zach brought it up. And then, like, after Zach said it, he's like, ah, oh, maybe I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> I'll do it. Yeah, whatever. I'm sure that Zach doesn't really give a shit. Nope. He'll get work no matter what he does. And besides, Hangover 2 sucked. I Man. Can't, um, third one coming out in 20. Oh, they are doing a third one, aren't they? 2014, I think. Again, in the same vein as Star Wars Episode 7, uh, can't be worse than the previous one, so I'll give it a chance. Yeah, it's true. Unless it somehow is, in which case I'll have to kill myself after I see you it. You might have to kill yourself. Because goddamn Hangover 2. Like, I loved Hangover 1. It was great. Yeah, it was really good. And then... A lot of, I remember, like, laughing my ass off the whole time. Yeah, it was, yeah, like, best best comedy in a couple years, I would say. And then, oh, god damn you, Hangover 2. You were a piece of shit. Well, Ugh. the thing is, <coughs> Hangover 2, if it was Hangover 1, it might have been okay. Because yeah. it was... Just the same thing. I it, couldn't believe how fucking cookie cutter it was. They just replaced things. They replaced losing baby, Justin Bartha with Asian brother-in-law. Yeah. Replaced baby, baby with monkey, monkey. And they replaced Vegas with Thailand. And and that's it. Yeah. And it's, the rest was the same. Same thing. Yeah. Ugh. They even Bad had times. they even had um, uh, friggin' Ken Jeong 
being a crazy idiot with his wiener out. With his wiener out again. Ugh. He loves having his wiener out. He's an interesting dude. He is an interesting dude. Should've, Especially when he got... Should have kept his medical practice. <laughs> probably not. He's probably made a little... Even though doctors... Doctors do okay financially, he's probably made exponentially more money acting. He probably made more money making the goods than he did as a doctor. <laughs> Uh, I love a good... The goods. I, mean, I love I a good see, the goods reference. And we'll never see. Although I do like everybody in it, but it just did not appeal to me. Yeah. Uh, so you want to jerk each other off or what? I guess. It's the only thing left to do. I think we're we're good for time. I think so. I feel uh, good. Yeah. I feel real good. <laughs> okay, before before I get weird. <laughs> before you should... get any harder than you already are? Yeah. I'm a, yeah, half-mast. Half-mast. All right. Well, next time you listen to this, it will be it'll tomorrow's be tomorrow episode. for us, and probably a couple. Sorry, not even tomorrow. Today. Yeah, and a couple weeks for you. So. Will it be a couple weeks? Uh. It'll be all week. Probably all week. Whatever. At least this is the first time in a while that we're not backed up on episode, because we recorded that four-hour one and we were backed up for. Yeah. A while. Yeah, yeah. This will, yeah. This is actually being recorded after episode eleven is being recorded after ten was released. So, we're it's the first time, isn't it? Yeah, uh, probably since one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So I think we're good. So uh, until next time, uh, Powder Two is a shithead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know if I can top Powder Two. <laughs> I'm gonna go with the obvious choice that I've already said is. Uh, the, the whole Star Wars franchise is a shithead. Yeah, fuck you, George Lucas. <laughs>